round to the nearest 10 or 100 lesson 1.2. Please watch the previous lessons so you won't become lost or confused and they're linked in the video's description. When we round a number, we find a number that tells us about how much or about how many. If the number to its right is a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, the number will stay the same and all the numbers to its right will become zeros. 23 rounded to the nearest 10 is 20. We find the place value we're rounding to. It's the tens place, the nearest 10. We can put an arc underneath the 2 in the tens place. The 3 is going to tell the 2 what to do, and it tells it to stay the same. Then, when its job is done, the 3 becomes a 0. We have 20. 23 rounded to the nearest 10 is 20. When we look at 23 on a number line right here, we can see it's closer to the 20 than it is to the 30. This is just a little space. That's a big space, isn't it? So it's closer to the 20. We identify which place value we're rounding to. We can put a little arc underneath it or a little line underneath it. Then we look at the number to the right. It's a 3. And that'll tell us what to do. The 3 tells us what to do. It says to the 2, stay the same. The 2 stays the same, and the 3's job's done. It becomes a 0, so 23 rounds to 20. If the number to the right is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, the number will go up 1, and all the numbers to its right will become zeros. 27 rounded to the nearest 10 is 30. We're rounding to the tens place, so that's the 2. We put a little arc underneath it or a little line underneath it. The 7 tells it what to do. 7 says go up 1. The 2 becomes a 3. The seven's finished with its job, and it becomes a 0. When we look on a number line, here's 20, here's 30, and here's 27. 27 is closer to 30 than it is to 20. 27 rounded to the nearest 10 is 30. So for your notes, our rounding rule is if the number to the right is a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, then that place value is going to stay the same. 72, we're rounding to the nearest 10. We can put a little arc or line underneath it. The 2 tells the 7 what to do. It tells it to stay the same. The 7 stays the same, and when the 2's finished, it becomes a 0. 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, it tells the place value to go up 1. We have 75. The 5 tells the 7 to go up 1 to 8. When the 5 is finished with his job, he becomes a 0. So 75 rounds to 80. For rounding to the nearest 10, we ask ourselves which 10 is closest. Is it a 10, a 20, a 30, a 40? Is it one of these? And yes, it can actually even be 100 if we're rounding to the nearest 10. And I'll show you that in a minute. When we're rounding to the nearest hundred, we ask ourselves which hundred is closest? 100, 200, 300, 400? Is it one of these hundreds? And actually, it could be a thousand. And I'll show you that too. And the rule works for any place value. You could use this rule to round to the nearest hundred thousand or the nearest million. We can round to the nearest hundred using this rule. We want to round to the nearest hundred, we have 317. We put a little arc or line underneath the place value we're rounding to. The three is in the hundreds place. And the number to its right, this one, is going to tell the three what to do. The one is going to tell the three to stay the same. Remember, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 says stay. So the three is going to stay the same. And when the one is finished doing its job, telling it what to do, it and all the numbers to the right become zeros, so we have 300. When we look at 317 on a number line, because that would be 320, 330, 340, 350, and then it goes up to 400, 
317 is closer to 300 than it is to 400, isn't it? 184 rounded to the nearest hundred. The one is in the hundreds place. We put our little arc underneath it. The number to the right is going to tell it what to do, and that's an eight. An eight tells the one to go up one digit, so it's going to go up to a two. When the eight is finished doing its job telling the hundreds place what to do, it and all the numbers to the right become zeros. So 184 rounded to the nearest hundred is 200. We can look on a number line. 184 would be about right here. It's more than 150, isn't it? That would be about 160, 170, 184. It's closer to the 200 than it is to the 100. Now this is a little different. We need to round 98 to the nearest 10. It actually rounds to 100. That would be 10 tens. We underline or put an arc underneath the place value we're rounding to. The 8 tells the 9 to go up to the next 10. We have 9 tens, then it would be 10 tens. When we round 9 tens up to another 10, it becomes 10 tens. We can see on a number line, 98 is very close to 100. It's closer to 100 than it is to 90. It's closer to 10 tens than it is to 9 tens. When we're rounding 981 to the nearest 100, we put a little mark, a line or an arc, underneath the hundreds place. The 8 tells the 9 to go up to the next 100. We have 9 hundreds. The next largest one would be 10 hundreds. That would be 1,000. 10 one hundreds is equal to 1,000. We can see 981 on a number line is very close to 1,000 and not that close to 900. It's very close to 10 one hundreds and not that close to 9 one hundreds. So sometimes when we're rounding a big number, it'll actually take us to the next place value. 273 is between 200 and 300. And it's closer to 300 than it is to 200. So on our number line, we can see this is about 273. It's more than 250. So it's closer to this 300 than it is to the 200. We can use the rule. The 7, just to the right of the hundreds place, tells the 2 to go up 1 to a 3. And then the 7 and all the numbers to the right become zeros when it's finished with its job. 273 rounds to 300. What if we weren't rounding to the hundreds place, though? What if we were rounding to the nearest tens place? We could put a little arc or line underneath the tens place and look to the 3 on the right to tell us what to do. 3 says stay the same. So the 7 will stay the same. 273 rounded to the nearest 10 would be 270. If we were rounding it to the nearest tens place, we would get 270. The 3 is finished with its job. It becomes a 0. And the 7 is staying the same because the 3 told it to. But if we're rounding to the nearest 100, then the 7 tells the 2 what to do. It tells it to go up and it would be 300. Now let's see if we can round these numbers to the nearest 10. The 1 is in a tens place. We have 18. The 8 tells the 1 to go up to a 2. When it's finished with its job, it becomes a 0. 18 rounds to 20. But what if we have 118 and we're rounding to the nearest 10? We still put an arc underneath the tens place. That's the 1. We still look to the 8, the number to the right, to tell us what to do. It tells the 1 to go up to a 2. And he's just going to go along for the ride, the 100. So we're going to have 100. This becomes a 2. And the 8 becomes a 0. 118 rounded to the nearest 10 is 120. Here we have 79. We want to round it to the nearest 10's place. 
That's the 7. The 9 tells the 7 to go up to an 8. When the 9 is finished with its job, it becomes a 0. 79 rounded to the nearest 10 is 80. What about 279? It's the same thing, but the 2 is just going to go along for the ride. So we put the 2 here. The 7 is going to go up to an 8 because the 9 tells it to. And the 9 is going to turn into a 0 when its job is finished. 280. What about 41? We're rounding to the place where the 4 is. We put our little mark. The 1 tells the 4 to stay the same. When its job is done, it becomes a 0. 41 rounded to the nearest 10 would be 40. We can do it with 541. The 5 comes along for the ride. The 1 tells the 4 to stay the same, and when its job is done, it becomes a 0. 541 rounded to the nearest tens place is 540. We can do it to the nearest 100. Here we have 372. We're rounding to the nearest 100. That's where we put our arc or our line. The 7 is going to tell the 3 to go up to a 4. And when the 7's job is done, it becomes a 0, and all the numbers to the right become a 0. 372 rounded to the nearest 100 is 400. What if we had 1,372? This 1,000 goes along for the ride. We put it here, and then we look at what we've got. We're rounding to the hundreds place. The 7 tells the 3 to go up to a 4, and then the 7 and the 2 become zeros because the job is done. 1,372 rounds to the nearest 100 to 1,400. How about 413? This 1 is going to tell the 4 to stay the same. So it's going to stay the same, and the 1 and the 3 are going to become zeros. What if we had 3,413 and we're rounding to the nearest 100? Well, it's still the 4. The 3 is going to come along for the ride. And we're going to have a 4, 0, 0. 3,413 rounds to 3,400 when we round it to the nearest hundreds. Turning to the nearest hundred, this 5 is going to tell the 8 to go up to a 9. And when the 5's job is done, it and all the numbers to the right become zeros. So 855 rounds to the nearest hundred to 900. 2,855, we bring the 2 along and just write it here. And then we look at the place value we're rounding. The 5 tells the 8 to go up to a 9. And then it and all the numbers to the right become zeros. 2,855 rounded to the nearest 100 is 2,900. The greatest number that will round to 30 is 34. If we wanted to find a number, the largest number that would round to a 30, it would have to be 34. Because if we had 35, that 5 would tell it to go up to 40. Remember, when the 5 is the digit to the, to the right, it tells the number to go up 1. So if this was 35, it would tell it to become a 40. So the greatest number that would round to 30 would be a 34. And the least number that would round to 30 is 25, because the 5 tells the 2 to go up to a 3, and it becomes a 0. If we had a 24, it would tell it to round to 20. The 4 would tell the 2 to stay the same. So the greatest number that will round to 30 would be 34, and the least number that would round to 30 would be 25. It would be the numbers in between here, and that would be the numbers that would round to 30. So our rule tells us if the number to the right is a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, then the place value we're rounding to is going to stay the same. That number will stay the same. If the number to the right is a 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, then the 
number that we're rounding to, that place value, is going to go up by 1. We have 83. We can put a little line underneath the 8. The 3 says, hey, 8, stay the same. So he does. And when the 3 is finished with his job, he becomes a 0. When we have 86 and we're rounding to the nearest 10, the 6 tells the 8, hey, 8, go up 1. So he does to a 9. And when he's finished with his job, he becomes a 0. And this works for any place value. If we were rounding to the hundreds, we, and this was an 800, the 3 would tell it to stay the same. If this were hundreds, the 6 would tell the 8 to go up to 900. So if you put this rounding rule into your notes, you should be fine. And you can use it to round to any place value. Just remember to underline the place value that you're rounding to so you know. Then look at the place value to its right to tell you what to do to go up or down. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye.